What if I told you that you didn't have to use fancy schmancy software to get your drip campaigns going for your business? You can actually do it all through Google Sheets with a simple script that I'm gonna show you how to make right now. What's up everybody, I'm a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools, the place where we build cool, impactful apps using low-cost solutions. Today, we're gonna to be building a drip campaign system in Google Sheets using app scripts. But so, a lot of email marketers use this technique, it's really effective, and there are a lot of software uh, companies out there that provide drip campaigns as a part of their core feature set. The only problem is those can get a little expensive, and that could hurt, especially when you don't have much of a budget. So today, I'm gonna to show you how you can do it for a very low cost uh, using Google Sheets and Google Forms and app scripts. This code is actually going to be building upon some of the code that we wrote to auto send emails from a Google form submission. If you haven't watched that video, I'll leave a link in the description below. So feel free to check it out if you're interested. Now, just a quick recap of what we did for the auto sending emails based on form submissions. We built out an HTML template for the email itself. And then we also set up an on form submit event trigger, which would fire whenever somebody submitted to connect the Google form. So as new rows entered into the Google Sheet, we would send out an email to the user based on their uh, information that they submitted through the form. For our drip campaigns, we're gonna do something similar. We're still going to be using the form as the first lead capture point. And then from there, we'll wait a few days and then send out another email to that same user based on the initial date that they submitted the form. And then we'll send the third email to that user a few days after the second one is sent. So this is gonna require us to add a few different things. Uh, first one is we're gonna have to add additional email templates. We can actually just copy over the email template that we wrote uh, last time. We're also going to have to calculate the send dates for the subsequent emails. And then lastly, we're gonna need a script that will comb through the entire list of form submissions and then pick out the ones that should be receiving email two, as well as the ones that will be receiving email three. Those are the three things that we need to build in order to get drip campaigns working with Google Sheets. But let's visualize this on a whiteboard so that we have a clear understanding of exactly how it's gonna look. What we have today is a Google form where when somebody submits a response to it, it's going to put those responses into a Google Sheet, right? And within that Google Sheet is an attached app scripts project that runs some code to pull in the data that is being submitted into the Google Sheet and then sends out an email to the user as an auto reply. What we want to do now is have another script in here, which whenever this one triggers, it's going to go back into the sheet and then it's going to input a date for email two and then a date for email three, just to specify when we should send the subsequent emails within our drip campaign, all right? So once we have those date values within each row in the Google Sheet, we also want another script within our app script project, which is going to run on a daily basis. It's supposed to look like a clock, sorry. And every single time that it runs, it's going to take a look at the spreadsheet and then it's going to output two lists. The first list is everybody that is eligible to receive email to. And then the second list is going to be everyone eligible for email three. And then based on these two lists, it's going to use the template for email two, and then send an email, right? And it's gonna do the same thing, but using the template for email three, and then send the email to them. That's basically what we need to do uh, within this build. So we're still going to keep the same Google form as a lead capture form, and then that's going to send the data into the Google Sheet which is going to record it and then trigger off an auto reply email to the user. 
and that's going to, based on the form submission date, add two additional dates over to the same row for that user so that when we run our daily scripts in the morning to check for drip campaign emails to send out, it's going to get all the qualifying people where the date for email two or the date from email three equals to the current date. It's going to make two lists and then process those accordingly uh, to their appropriate HTML template for that email that's going to send those emails out. And that's essentially your drip campaign uh, system within Google Sheets using app scripts. All right, but let's dive into it. Uh, we'll start from the first thing of adding dates to the row. Okay, so this part is pretty basic. What we're going to do is we're going to add in two new columns into the spreadsheet here, one for email two and another for email three. We'll also add in a column for unique ID uh, just so we can easily reference the rows uniquely in the future. And then going over into our code, we're going to create a new variable for sign up date and we're going to grab it from the event object just like last time. Uh, so e.name values and then from there there's a timestamp which we will assign to sign up date. So now that we have the sign up date, we need to get the date from it. So we can do that by doing dot get date. And then once we have that, we can actually add days to it in a numerical fashion. And then we'll use that within a set date against the new date and don't forget to make a new date out of that entire thing so that we actually have a date timestamp. That's a mouthful. Uh, but overall, it's going to look like this once you combine it all and create the new dates that you're looking for. And with that, it's time to write it all into the sheet. Here, we'll use something that you're probably familiar with already. Uh, it'll be the dot range and then dot set values. Uh, the main difference here is that we're using row obtained from the event object as well as e.range.column end, uh, which is just a nice way to always make sure you're appending to the end of the row uh, any new data that you want. So now with that code, uh, you'll add it to the form submission trigger. And so when people submit on the form, you'll see the record, the row, and then also the email to an email three dates will come shortly after um, the row appears. All right, so for the script in which we want to find eligible submissions for the next email campaign, we're gonna have to take a look at the entire spreadsheet. So you might have like n number of rows in here. It could be 10, could be 100, could be 1,000, whatever it might be, we're gonna want a script that can go through all of it. So within the app script project that you have, we're going to take in all the data from here, right? Using that get data, get data range. And then we're going to use something called the dot filter function on that in order to filter out into two lists, one for email to list and another for the email three list. And so the way that we do that is by taking the current date, seeing whether or not it equals to the send date for email two and then for email three. All right, but let's dive into the first part of this. Uh, that's gonna be the filter method. So after you grab the form submissions by using dot get data range and then dot get values, we'll get the dates that we need, which is going to be the current date and then the email scheduled send date. The tricky part about comparing two timestamps is that you can't. Uh, you actually need to format that timestamp into something that's more uh, generic and normalized. So in this case, we'll use utilities.format date in order to do that. And we'll use a month slash date slash year uh, in the four digit format in order to compare the current date and the email schedule sent date. Now that we have the filter function working, we'll create two lists out of that, email to list and then an email three list. Notice how I'm returning an object where the keys uh, within the object is email underscore two and email underscore three, each with the respective list assigned to them. This is gonna help us in the future uh, when we create the job to actually go through each list to send the emails out. You'll see later on. Now that we have a function to get the email list, it's time to create the job. So we'll create a variable and set it equal to the output of the function that we just wrote before. And then we're going to grab some code from the original uh, send auto reply email uh, for the HTML template. 
The main difference that we're doing here is that we're going to set the email and the name uh, equal to the target and a position within that array. So before we're using the named values from the event object, uh, here we're actually just going to use the data we're pulling through from those email lists. So within our job, we're going to create a nested for loop, and then we're going to shove that uh, HTML template data um, snippet that we just showed you into the nested for loop. Now, notice how we're using item uh, to create the template from file. If you remember, the object that we're returning when we're creating those lists contains uh, email underscore two and email underscore three. Now, the reason I did this was so that we can use that same uh, reference when we're doing the for loop. Uh, to reference the actual HTML files uh, that you see over here on the left. That makes it a lot easier to generate the correct template for each email list that we're actually iterating through within this loop. And just to make sure things are running as expected without actually sending the emails, I would suggest entering a console.log statement over here. Uh, this one is just uh, telling us which email address we're sending to as well as the email template. Uh, that way, when you test this code and run it, uh, you'll be able to make sure that you're sending the right emails to the right people, use some dummy data. Uh, that way you're not bombarding emails through the servers <laughs> unnecessarily. All right, awesome. So we've got email sending. That's pretty cool. But wait, don't go yet. There's still one more problem that we haven't solved for. Before we dive into that, a quick word from our sponsors. I'm just kidding, we don't have any sponsors. Anyhow, so uh, I did wanna take this opportunity to talk about the possibility of creating a bootstrapping tools community, a place where all you bootstrappers can go and talk to each other, uh, get some help on a project. I'll be there so I can answer all your questions. It's a lot easier, I think, to do uh, that in a community rather than in the YouTube comments, which could get really hairy. And so I'm thinking about it right now, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I'm gonna drop a link for a Google form in the description below. If you are interested, please fill it out. There's only a few questions in there, it's very fast, uh, but it'll help me at least know how many people are interested in joining a community like that. But anyhow, let's get back to solving this problem. All right, so just as an overview before we start coding over here, we have three emails, right? We have email one, email two, and email three. And each one of those should have its own subject, as well as its own message. Maybe you also want its own layout, but we're not gonna dive into that within this video. Uh, I'll probably make another video just to talk about different designs for those. But essentially, we want each one to have its own subject and message. So one of the ways that we can do that is just by leveraging what we built before, the settings function. And instead of just having one subject and message in there, we're going to create an object. So we'll take an emails object, right? And then within it, we're gonna do email one, and then another object in there for subject and message. And then we'll do email two, for the same thing, subject, message. And that way, when we go to process um, each list, we'll have the email that it is, and we'll reference that key within our object to get the subject and message that's appropriate for that template that we're sending out. But I basically have chicken scratch over here. I can't really read it. So let's actually just go ahead and dive into some of that code. So what we had before in our settings function was a return statement that contained only one subject and one message. What we wanna do now is change that up so that we have a collection of them. And to do that, we're gonna create a new key within our object uh, called email copy, which will also be an object. And then within it will be a collection of objects, uh, one for email one, one for email two, and then email three. Notice how they're uh, structured as email underscore and then the number. And then within, within each one will be the subject and message also in an object form. That way we can reference it when we're iterating uh, through the loop. So essentially what you want to do is anywhere in your code where you say settings.subject or settings.message, you want to update that to say settings.emailcopy.email and then the number and then the subject or the message. 
And for cases like within our for loop, we'll actually have an item uh, for that. So we'll have to update that to be settings dot email copy and then use square brackets to indicate the item and then you do dot subject or dot message that way it's super dynamic and that's why it's helpful for us to use a, an object uh, with the keys set to the same email name make it easier for us to reference this data as needed in a more dynamic way all right, folks, that's going to be our build for drip campaigns. If you want the source code, I'm going to drop a link in the description below where you can access it. I actually create a few different versions. One where it's just a source code for all you people out there who already know after and just want a code template. Uh, that's all for you. I'm also going to create one with a uh, PDF of setup instructions. And that's for everybody who needs a little bit of help. Also, don't forget to fill out the form if you're interested in joining a community. Uh, for bootstrapping tools where you can ask questions, uh, get help, access a uh, code template, as well as exclusive walkthroughs uh, for more complex builds. Also, like and subscribe to the channel for more of me. But that's it, folks. I'm a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools, and we're out.